So I bought this uh, camping lamp. Um, I saw I saw Big Clive do a teardown on this, and I immediately went and bought one for myself. Um, it was only about ten dollars off eBay from a U.S. seller, so I got it in like three four days. Um, and the well, let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I was thinking. Um, has a remote control. charging cable and here is the the lamp it has um, solar panels but these solar panels are tiny they won't won't, won't do anything um, but oh well let's uh, see the lamp work oh ah, apparently it's either dead as a doorknob or Yeah, seems like it was shipped to me completely dead. So we will uh, probably have to charge this up. But this, the whole thing about this lamp is it can also act as a um, power bank. So you can charge your phone and then it can be a, a lamp that you hang while you're camping, um, which is cool. Um, and it has different, uh, you know, light outputs and intensities. But I was... It has a couple tiny 18650s in here, terrible ones. Let me see if I can spudger this open here. I might have to get my actual spudger. But anyways, the whole, the whole reason I bought this is I'm going to upgrade the 18650s in here and turn this into something really usable. Right now, I think it's less than 2,000 milliamps, which if this is a light and it's supposed to charge your phone, the problem is your phone will suck more than this can deliver by itself so now there's nothing left to run the light so we need some real usable capacity inside of here if we want to charge our phone and run the light so i intend to upgrade these 18650s these cheap chinese 18650s with some quality 18650s and that's what we're going to do in this video okay let's uh, take this thing apart um I was able to spudge this off. This came off super easy, no glue, which is nice. Um, I see three or four little screws holding this uh, LED panel on. It is a little weird that it's completely dead as I received it. Um, normally the 18650s have some, some capacity. So let's unscrew this and see what we have inside. Okay. Okay, that comes up. There you go. There are the uh, cheap 18650s. Let's uh, see if there is any voltage on those 18650s and see why it doesn't want to turn on. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with here. Uh, 1.9 volts. Well, that's your problem. These batteries are below uh, below uh, the safe level for uh, an 18650, so that is a serious problem. So, um, let's see if this light will turn on if I, uh, maybe I can use my, maybe I can use my bench power supply here. Let me see if I can push the button while holding voltage. Okay, the light does work. Um, okay, the light does work. Uh, it's just the batteries arrived super dead. Let's check that again. Yeah, they, um, they've already sucked. By attaching the power supply, those batteries have already sucked up some current to bring their voltage up. But yeah, they were below the, um, the, th the threshold for an 18650. That's why the light wouldn't turn on. So, I think... I wonder if I can get a third 18650 in there or if I'm pushing my luck. Probably... Probably pushing my luck. So I guess we'll do two 18650s. We'll spot weld them together, solder on the leads just like they are in there, and um, we will uh, 
I think we will triple the capacity. The, these, I believe, are both one amp 18650s, 1000 milliamps at 18650s. So there's 2000 milliamps in here. I can get some, I can get two 3000 milliamp batteries and triple the capacity of this. Um, and I think that'll be a real upgrade to this light. So that's what we will do. Okay, here are two um, LG 3200 milliamp hour batteries that are salvaged from um, old uh, like Lime scooters. Um, I keep hundreds of these in stock in boxes just for all my projects. Um, anyways, uh, let us um, quickly spot weld some tabs. I threw a little Kapton tape around him. He has a tab. We will uh, we will quickly spot weld this tab on. And I'm using my uh, BIFRC spot welder. Um, it's at its low, one of its... I'm using some pretty thin nickel so we can uh, keep it at a pretty low setting to do this. Um, okay. Okay, yep, that's way too much. I need to put this at its lowest setting let me reset it and find and put it back to its lowest setting because this thin nickel only needs very there we go okay that is spot welded let's flip it over let's connect the negative side Yeah, this is some thin. Okay, that is connected. Um, that, yeah, that spot welder is overkill for the super thin nickel that I chose. I should have picked some thicker nickel, but doesn't matter. It is all spot welded now. Um, so, uh, Next thing I we will do is we will uh, let's pop out this battery. Um, it's, it's hot glued in here, I can tell. Uh, and I better fire up my hot glue gun because I'm going to have to hot glue in my batteries when I'm done. All right, there's my hot glue gun. Okay, let us try and get some of this hot glue out of here. Okay, there we go, it's out. Okay, and I'm gonna save this sticky uh, pad for the top of my battery, my new batteries. Okay, we need my soldering iron. And we're gonna melt the solder on. Oh, there we go, there's one. Okay, the solder is melted on the old battery. Let me get some fresh solder. Okay, now the hard part is just positioning everything while you while you do a little soldering here. Let me figure out how I'm going to do this. First of all, let me put a tiny little blob of solder on the nickel. Okay, blob of solder. Okay, blob of solder. Now, we need to attach the positive to this solder. 
Okay, that is attached. And we need to attach the negative to this solder. It takes a bit of ambi. You need to be a little bit ambidextrous. Okay, I think that is attached. It is. And now we can shove these batteries back in here. Perfect, like that. Put the sticky pad on top like it was. And then we can probably hit this with a little bit of hot glue. Okay, my hot glue is not really up to temperature, but that'll do. Okay, um, I think we can now screw this back in place. Let's get some screws. Line up the holes. Nice. All right, so with five minutes work, we have tripled the capacity of this um, lamp, and now it should work. There we go, full brightness. And there's dim, dimmer, SOS mode, and uh, it's back off. And then there's your USB charging, which I'll uh, test in a minute, but yeah, I think we have just tripled this. Um, the, ca the capacity of this, uh, you know, camping lamp. Um, now you actually could charge your phone off here and um, you actually could charge your phone off here and still this should provide light for hours on, upon hours now. Um, so uh, let me put this on charge and uh, we'll see what else we're going to do with this lamp. So one thing we didn't discuss is that this also has a remote control. Um, the cool thing about the remote control is if you have this hanging at the top of your tent and you're trying to go to sleep, you don't have to you know, get out of your sleeping bag and go and um, stand up and try and turn this off. Um, you can just you know, use the remote control to turn this off and go to sleep. Um, so you can turn it on, you can turn it off, turn it on, you can change brightness, SOS, Turn it off. So the remote control is pretty handy. Um, you know, just a nice uh, quality of life thing for this light. So you know, for ten bucks and about a dollar in in, uh, you know, probably two dollars I would say in better eighteen six fifties. I think I've built a real decent camping lamp here, and um, I think I might uh, I think I might do some capacity tests and see you know how long it runs for. Um, just uh, just for Fun and education. So I loaded the old batteries in one of my testers and charged them up. Um, and it only took 1.8 amp hours. So uh, yeah, we put we the new batteries we put in are six amp hours, and the old batteries were only 1.8 amp hours. So uh, yeah, that is a vast improvement. One cool use for this light is as a uh, engine bay uh, work lamp. It does a great job of illuminating the engine bay and it has that nice hook just to hook right off the uh, hood there. So that's pretty cool.